Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now I noticed just a second ago that we did have some sun that sort of peeked through right at 1030. <laughs> oh well. But actually when I saw the forecast this morning, I uh, I saw that around 10 o'clock it was supposed to be part, uh, partly cloudy until 4 o'clock when again we get the, the downpour. So uh, I thought there's how God works, you see. From 10 o'clock until 4 o'clock, we have the time when we can get together and we can celebrate. Um, even though the rain isn't so bad in that it isn't snow. So, <laughs> we've had, we've, we've actually been sort of fortunate, I think, this winter as far as the snow is concerned. <laughs> well, wow. see, I, 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 I go back to the days when um, literally having to dig out to get outside. And so I, I haven't seen one of those winters in a while. Uh, probably in the past 10 years, uh, I have seen the snow banks high enough so that when the cars go down the street, I can't see them. Um, so this year, comparatively, I can always see the mail van when it goes, and that's the important bit, you know, so that I know if we have mail or not, so that I know whether I have to walk down to the end of the driveway, or, or Elizabeth has to walk down to the end of the driveway. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, there we go. Thank you so much for that assignment. Anyway, so here we are this morning. Uh, we're not going to have the musical encourage this morning um, but well if anybody would like to do a solo for us I mean I, I, I know they're uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay so with that what do we have uh, as announcements this morning if not let's open our hymnals then to number 117, O God, our help in Jesus Christ.
Loving Lord God, we come to you today with great thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanksgiving for this, this sun that it has emerged and, and is warming us and touching us. And the sun that you sent into this world, that we would be warmed and touched by his presence in our lives. But Lord, we come to you this morning with some concerns in our hearts. Concerns for those who, who are in horrendous situations in war-torn areas of our world, especially in the area of Ukraine. We pray that you be working in that situation to, to touch the hearts of all involved, that, that there might be a pathway to peace. Lord, we also pray for those who, who lifted today for physical affirmity might feel your healing touch in their lives. Work with the hands of the doctors and the nurses in order that they might be skillful in treating each of these conditions. We pray, Lord, for all who need your touch upon their lives this day. Those who, who need so desperately to have your presence in their lives. We pray also, Lord, that, that you will be with those who, who have anniversaries to celebrate uh, this week. And we pray that you will bless them as they celebrate those milestones. Lord, we, we are so thankful that we now lift our hearts to you in prayer. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. All right, we praise this morning is to read uh, Psalm number 191 responsively. Or, I'm sorry, Psalm 91. And it's found on page 810 of that book. Those who dwell in the, center, in the shelter of the Most High who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my, my God in whom I trust. For the Lord will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence, and will cover you with his wings. Under the Lord's wings you will find refuge. God's faithfulness is the shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have named the Lord your refuge, the Most High your habitation. No evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For God will give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up on their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent. A trample underfoot. Because they cleave to me in love, I will deliver them. I will protect them because they know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. I will satisfy them with long life and show them my salvation. Amen. Our hymn of reflection this morning is hymn number 395, Take Time to Be Holy.
meeting a young lady who uh, is going to read our scripture lesson this morning. So let's listen to the word of God. So the first lesson is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 10, beginning halfway through to verse 8 and going through verse 13. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith which you preach. But if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord, the same Lord over all is rich to all the time. For whoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the second reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1 and reading through verse 13. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness being tempted for forty days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in one little time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you, and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to you ever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He shall give you his angels charge over you, to keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. The word of God is for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, here we are in the uh, season of Lent. So does everybody have some familiar memories of Lent in ages in sorry? Days past, you know, we're not old enough to suffer from the ages thing, of course. Hmm, slippery toe. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I like. <laughs> uh, worship, uh, my favorite expression worship is not a spectator sport. There you go. So. <laughs> But we do all have memories of Lent uh, in our, our youth or childhood and so on. You know, it was, of course, it was that time when we were supposed to walk around. Sort of like people do after communion sometimes. Have you noticed that ever? You know, people, they'll be served communion and they're walking back to their pew and it's like, it's like we have to be sad. <laughs> but but it's, it's a reaction that we have. And, and Lent, by the way, um, well, let's talk about Lent. Let's see. So, so Lent's been around for a long time, believe it or not. Uh, it actually, um, a period around Easter, around the resurrection, was always celebrated in the early church. Uh, they didn't have, however, this... 40 days and so on that we now see in, in our uh, practice 
in the Methodist and the Catholic and most other uh, denominations, and in fact, in the Eastern Orthodox Church as well. This actually goes back to uh, the Council of Nicaea. Has anybody ever heard of the Council of Nicaea? Where we actually get that thing called the Nicene Creed. Everybody, now, you're all familiar with the Nicene Creed, right? Mm -hmm. If not, look in the back, I think it's 800 or something at the back of the hymnal, and you can read the Nicene Creed. Well, that, that took place in the year 325. We used to call it AD. Now I don't know what we call it. I think it's current age or something. Yeah, common era. Common era. Okay. Well, I like I still like AD. I hope you don't mind my... Uh, they use both of them. They use both of them? ADCE? <laughs> AD or CE. Okay. At any rate. So 325. Now that's a few years ago. Anybody remember that uh, date? Well, I, I'll tell you why that date is particularly in, entrenched in my mind, believe it or not. That's the, the, the council, and there were a number of councils, by the way, where all of the church fathers, yeah, sorry, it was all fathers, came together and they had councils, and they were usually, um, well, they didn't have a pope back then, but they had a bunch of emperors and folks that were involved. They called these councils. And these councils used to get together and try and reconcile differences in the churches. Can you imagine? Now, this was this is in Nicaea. Nicaea is in the modern country of Turkey. Uh, so it's necessarily now the Eastern Church rather than the Western Church. And, we can another time talk about all the differences between the two, the Orthodox Church and, the, and what became the Catholic Church. At any rate, 325 is important to me because that was the uh, council at which this young man called Nicholas became a bishop. Now, why would that be interesting for me? Well, in the fall, you may notice that this beard gets a little longer and whiter and so on. Well, Nicholas, that St. Nicholas, by the way, is where our tradition of a thing called Santa Claus came from. And so that's why the Council of Nicaea, to me, it's when Nicholas was uh, made a bishop. And that's where he really started his pilgrimage uh, into our hearts today. At any rate, at that council, there were, they, they did a bunch of things called canons. Now, canons are bodies of work that they put together that say, this is the rules of the church. Okay, so, and, uh, and again, there will be a quiz next week. So the fifth canon, by the way, talked about a thing called Lent. Well, actually, back then, they didn't call it Lent. They called it some... It was a Greek word that I can't even pronounce, but it was, you know, it's about this long and, and uh, talked about the word 40 in Greek. And so that's where the 40 days of Lent really became codified for the first time, 325. Now, I know that's so exciting, isn't it? But if you think, Lent has been celebrated in our church throughout history from that time until now. Now, there have been some changes. Originally, yes, it was only 36 days. Yes, you don't have the Sundays. Yes, it ends on, oh, it ends on Monday, Thursday. Oh, we, we have some traditions say it ends on Palm Sunday, and some say it ends on Good Friday. Well, if you add up 40 days, you can come up with any number that you want, but the point is Sunday doesn't count. So it really ends up with 36 days. In. Anyway, you see how we in the church get all confused about these things. The point is it's a 40-day period, which comes on to the point at which the Son has been crucified. It's a time of reflection, and it's a time of, of deep introspection where we can go closer to God. But... But I'd like to talk about the word Lent itself. Now, everybody knows where Lent comes from, right? The word Lent. English teachers, come on. 
Okay, Lent is from the Old English word for lengthen. Lengthen. Now, why did they apply this word then to this period? Well, it's interesting. Some, some scholars posit that, that the thought was during the spring of the year, the days are lengthening. So we have this lengthening in these 40 days every year. The days get longer. No matter what you do, the days get longer during this period of Lent. Now the association with the Bible in this is that our faith should be lengthening. So just as the sun, S-U-N, lengthens the day during the spring, the sun, S-O-N, lengthens our faith during this period of preparation for Holy Week. And so that's the history of the word Lent. And so this is a very precious time for all of us. It's a time when we should be growing closer and closer to our God in preparation. Now, traditionally, what happens during Lent? Well, let me, let me read to you uh, some of the suggestions for Lent. So it says, uh, 10 things you can try for during the Lenten season. Okay, you can try an electronic fast, giving up TV, Facebook, texting, tweeting, email, and all things electronic for one day every week or every day in Lent, and use that time to read and pray. Or you could start a prayer rhythm each day of Lent, seek out individuals in need of prayer, and pray for God's guidance in ministry and pray for another person. Or you could go deeper. Oh, you could, of course, I didn't put this in here, honest. It says, you could take a lay server ministries course as part of a Lenten discipline. <laughs> See, I, I didn't, as I said, I didn't write it. Boy, a general church does do some things. Anyway, uh, you could give up soft drinks, fast food, tea or coffee. Give up some food or drink as a way to grow closer to God. Give the money you save to help folks in different parts of the world who are in crisis. Forgive someone who doesn't deserve it, even yourself. Study a book on forgiveness. Create a daily quiet time. Spend 10 minutes a day in silence and prayer. Read a daily devotional for the season of Lent. See how it can help you add spiritual practice to your daily life beyond Lent. Cultivate a life of gratitude. Make someone a thank you letter each week and be aware of how many people have been helped and have helped you along the way. Spend time in visual meditation and prayer. Volunteer. Volunteer one hour or more each week with a local child, a shelter, tutoring program, nursing home, or prison ministry, and pray for the world. And finally, the suggestion from our general church, pray for others. Pray for others you see as you walk to and from classes, church, or drive to or from work, always pray for all with whom you come in contact. And so my brothers and sisters, here's some suggestions from our church of things that you can do or try during the Lenten period. Now, I'd like to talk a moment about the idea of of giving something up for Lent. You know, traditionally, of course, in the, the church fathers put together a, a program where you actually fasted. Yes, you, you went on a diet. 
not for 40 days, but certainly for three of the days of the week, normally Wednesday through Friday, you did not eat. Or then later on in, the, in uh, 1562, I believe they came up with the rule, well, you can have one meal at lunchtime. But before that, from 325 to the 1300s at least, you were supposed to fast from Wednesday to Friday. Three days a week. I mean, we all do that anyway, right? When we're on that crash diet, we kind of, yeah. John Wesley tried that, by the way. He tried fasting for those days. And, oh, after about, what, I think it was eight months, or I can't remember the exact time frame, but it was less than a year, uh, he started Wednesday and Friday rather than Wednesday, Thursday and Friday because his health deteriorated. And so it's important that we, we also keep our shrine of a body healthy during this time. But, but over the years, you see how it was important that we, we and, and even today, by the way, um, the Vatican II Council uh, 1969, I believe, came up with the thing on Fridays. Well, you can actually have, you can have meat on Fridays now in the Catholic Church. You knew that, right? You can, by the way, except during Lent, when you have to have fish or other on a Friday. And so there's all these things to do with Lent, you see. But it's all about giving something up. And from my point of view, I look at this list here, and I see, yes, it's giving something up, but more importantly, it's taking something on. And, and I learned it, this week in Sunday school, by the way, I, I learned something very important. That we, when we're taking a trip, prepare, and we take certain essentials. Don't we? Let's see. If we're, so we're going on a cruise. Now make sure we bring a bottle of wine just in case, but it's too expensive. No. Uh, at any rate, but the point is we prepare when we're taking a trip, don't we? If, if we're going to miss a meal or something, we take sandwiches with us or, or, you know, we take the essentials with us. And when we think the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and Jesus had nothing except Holy Spirit with him during that time. And so my brothers and sisters, I invite you at this time, no matter how, it, whether it's giving something up, whether it's taking something on, it is to take with us during this 40 days, more importantly, the Holy Spirit. Carry it with us. Help us to grow in this period, to lengthen our relationship with Jesus Christ during this period of Lent. Asking the Holy Spirit to be present in everything we do and help us to move forward in our faith and grow into a closer relationship with God. Because as we heard in the Romans passage this morning, we have but to call on the name of the Lord and we will be saved. I encourage you, call on the name of the Lord every day, not only during this period of Lent, but every day of your earthly pilgrimage. Shall we pray? Lord God in heaven, we, we thank you so much for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who came into this world that we might be saved from our sins. We pray that we might be fully involved with the Holy Spirit during this period of Lent and beyond that into our lives forever and ever. Because we know we will live with you forever and ever as we go forward from this place at this time. Lord, we pray that, that during this period of Lent we might be enriched and enlivened in spirit so much so that we reach out even more vigorously to touch those around us with your love. We pray for, for the beauty 
of loving you as much as you love us, especially during this time when we spend time intentionally with you in prayer, in meditation, and in love. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who came into this world, who spent those 40 days in the wilderness, who was tempted and tempted, and yet was true to your life. As we pray to be true to your love through all the days of our lives. Thus we pray in his holy name and let us say, Page 12. Are, are we? Yeah, you're upset. Page 12 in the uh, front of your hymnal, please, for our service. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Mercy to so God, we, we, have not, that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have, have failed to be an obedient church. We, we have, have not done your will. We have, we have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. For Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to pray silently, lifting your thoughts and prayers to God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now again, I'll ask that we nod our Christian love with each other as we continue in this worship. Does everyone have a cup in hand? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give our, our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And 
so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven. We praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. Make them for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to skip the Lord's Prayer here and recite it after the end of the meeting. Christ took the loaf. He broke it. His body broken for each of us. lifted it and saying thanks. He shed his blood for each of us. May God bless these elements as we lift our hearts to you. And so now I say to you, take of the bread, eat, and do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ, the Son and Savior. Now I invite you to take the cup. Take the cup and lift it to your lips, and as you drink it, Drink the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood that was shed for you for the remission of sins, that you might have everlasting life with the Father. And do this in remembrance of him. Almighty Father, we pray that as we consume this bread and this juice, that we might feel your spirit coursing through our veins with a renewed and refreshed sense of your presence. The nourishment that it provides to our body 
may this be also nourishment to our spirit and to our souls eternal with you, O God. And we pray this in the name of the Son who was sacrificed for our sins, saying the name of Jesus Christ and saying together, Merciful Lord God, we come to you today as your humble servants, praying that all that we have seen and done here today may have made a difference in our lives, so much so that we come into a closer and more intimate relationship with you. As we have celebrated communion together and as we have talked about this period of fast, this period of giving up, yet this period of taking on, let us then move forward with that mission that you have presented for each of us to go forward in your name, to touch others in your name, to love others in your name, to be the peacemakers and be those who are there for others in everything we do. We pray for the strength in this mission that we might be effective disciples in the name of Jesus Christ and that as we go forward, we might touch so many others with the good news. The good news of the Son who came into this world so that we might be saved. And now we recite together that prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Now shall we sing our final hymn today, number 130. God will take care of you.
be with us all until we're again together. And so I say to you, go in peace and love and touch others in his holy name each day in every way.